Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to show you how to create a minimalist photo book design or photo book layout. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to give us a like. So I want to do another design video and just share some very um, useful tips if you want to create a minimalist design. And I think nowadays minimalist designs are really kind of conquering not just books and art, but interior design and many other aspects of our lives. And I do love a minimalist design for a photo book because it's clean, it's easy on the eye. And I want to share with you my most important tips and techniques in creating a minimalist design for a photo book and after I shared these tips I'm going to create an actual design in Affinity Publisher and afterwards I'm going to go into Mixbooks Editor which is a very standard online photo book editor and show you how you can use some of their tools to create a minimalist design with what's available. So what does minimalist actually mean and how can we create a minimalist design and what should we not do if we want to create a minimalist design. So minimalism basically in, uh, in graphic design, to my understanding, means that there shouldn't be anything on the page that is not absolutely necessary and it should never be overcrowded. It should be clean and well organized. So these are the main kind of attributes that come to my mind when I think of a minimalist layout. Now here are going to be some rules that you should follow if you want to create a good looking minimalist layout. First one, is do not be afraid of white space. In every minimalist design you're going to see a lot of white space and white space doesn't necessarily have to be white as long as there is some space between your objects on the layout. So for example here you can see there is a lot of white space um, above these images between them and it's just not crowded. The second rule is that you should not have any clutter on the layout. So do not overfill your layouts with lots of stickers and very kind of vivid pattern backgrounds and photos to every single edge because it's not going to look minimalist. It's going to look the opposite of minimalist and it's going to be hard on the eyes. Number three is balance. So a good minimalist design is going to have some kind of balance, which could be symmetry, which could be any other geometrical balance on the layout. In the case of this photo book, I'm looking at this page and obviously this is how the book is going to be open in front of me. I have a left side and I have a right side and I want the two sides kind of to be balanced. If I have a lot of stuff going on on the left side and the right side is almost empty, it kind of looks a little bit off because it's not a balanced layout. So although it doesn't have to be completely symmetrical, because as you can see, I've got the big titles on this side, but the coverage should be roughly the same on both sides and you should find some kind of relationship between the left and right, top and bottom side of your layout. The next rule is about typography. Now this one is a tricky one because the main rule in minimalist designs is not to use too many typographies, too many types of typographies or fonts because again that can look very cluttered, it can look not clean. Uh, now in this design I've only used one font but it's going to be used in different formats. So this one is actually uh, Avenir Next here. It's just a little bit more spaced out and the bottom one is the same font but smaller and uh, in an italic form with some spacing again between the lines. Although you can use any kind of font as long as it's nicely spaced out and it's used in a, in a conscious way, Ideally, the sans serif fonts look best in minimalist layouts, so things that do not have too many ornaments and embellishments. The next rule is about the color palette or the colors you use on your designs. Now, again, you don't want to use very vivid colors and too many of them on the page, like a very vivid background with lots of, um, you know, patterns like a, an 80s wallpaper because it's not going to look minimalist. That was the opposite of minimalist. If you want to use colors, try to stick to neutrals, monochromes or uh, subtle shades and only use a couple, maybe two or three at most in a minimalist design. What you can also do if you want to use some more vivid colors, you can use them as an accent color. So something that pops out in the eye, but it's not overwhelming on your design. So in this case here, as you can see, my design is mostly white, but I chose this accent color here just to add a little bit of color to the background, but it's not over 
overpowering. The next rule, as I said already, um, kind of ties in with the no clutter, but this is more specific to photo books. Many photo book editors offer uh, the ability to add stickers and lots of graphics onto your page and very colorful backgrounds and all of these can really work against a minimalist design. So make sure you don't use any stickers or if you use them they are very subtle and minimalist in design as well so they kind of match your design and try to stay away from effects that you can apply to photos such as shadows and strong borders and finally everything on your design should ideally be aligned and by that I mean if you look at the edges of these photos they are all lined up the text is lined up to the side of the photo and everything is just nicely aligned and spaced now sometimes you can see minimalist designs which are less rigid in alignment and it can be a little bit more haphazard and that can work as well as long as you have some kind of idea behind why you're choosing that and how you're going to work with it so these are my tips and rules for creating the design. Now let's actually recreate this design from scratch and let's see what I was doing here. So I'm going to add two pages and I'm in Affinity Publisher here and I have a one inch margin all around just to give me some kind of spatial reference of how far I can go out. And the first thing I want to do is add that title. So I'm going to click on my artistic text tool, type in Florence and I'm going to come to my fonts, Avenir next, and I'm going to make it all capitals and 300 spacing. So tracking between the letters is very important again to create space. I'm going to make it slightly bigger and that's going to be my main title. For the text or description, I'm going to use a text box, which you can find here, the text frame tool. And I'm just going to type in some random text. So here is my text box. And the good thing about the text box is obviously that you can change the size and the shape and then the text goes with it. So it doesn't change the actual size of the text. It just changes the alignment and the actual uh, format of the text. So I'm going to come again to my fonts and choose Avenir next, but this time I'm going to go with Italic and I'm also going to add maybe 25% tracking. This is another important tool here, the spacing between your lines. So how far away are the lines from each other? If your lines are really crammed in together, again, it's hard to read and it's not using white space very well and very efficiently. So you want to bring it out a little bit, maybe one and a half, 15 or 16 in this case. And the rest should be all good to go. Now I'm going to line these up nicely. Now, obviously when you work in a great app like Publisher, you have so many tools that help you align things and help you work in a way that you don't have to spend hours and hours on trying to match things up and um, change sizes and so on. Now I'm going to put a photo box here, which is the picture frame rectangle tool. Let's make it that size. And I'm going to add a photo to add this photo here. Now I need to move this text a little bit further up, maybe here, that's my photo. Now I want to leave a little bit of space here just because I like it and you don't have to. And let's try to put a bit more space so it's equally spaced and just, now that's one of my pages. And now I'm going to add that accent color. So I'm going to use a rectangle. You can use any kind of shape as long as it's a simple shape like a circle, a rectangle, a square. Add maybe this much. And I like the shade, you can change the color. Again, it's a pastel kind of brownish color which goes really well with Florence because that's what most of the buildings look like. And I'm going to move this layer behind so it doesn't cover up my text. Let's just go into preview mode and just a bit further down, something like that. Okay, now let's come on to the other side. I'm going to create three more boxes. I can just duplicate this one and I'm going to move it to the same place. So I get the same distance here on between these two edges. And let's make it a little bit narrower and another one and another one. Now you can see that the three photos are actually a little bit longer and you can select all three of them. And when you change the size of a group of objects, they're going to change proportionately, which is again a great tool in Publisher or any kind of pro app. Now I'm going to add some more photos here and I'm going to make this bigger. And now you can see the photos are not aligned in the middle. And what you can do instead of doing it manually, you can just select all of them 
come to properties and scale to max fit and select the anchor point to the middle. And there we go. So I need to move this down a little bit. And that's my three photos. Now I'm going to duplicate this little accent color and move it here to the bottom, just to kind of have it there as well. And I'm also going to add a date. I'm going to duplicate this title here, August 2021, and obviously make it much smaller and align it with the first photo of the church. And now you can see the design is ready. It was very, very simple. Obviously there's so much more you can do here, but I just wanted to show you something that kind of follows the rules that I was talking about and creates a very clean, kind of minimalist look in a photo book. Now let's assume that you don't have these tools and you only work in Shutterfly's editor or Sal or Mixbook. And although it's gonna be a little bit harder, you can still create something very, very similar. So let's move on to Mixbook and let's try to recreate the same layout with their limited tools. So I am now in Mixbook's editor. Although you can start off a minimalist looking book by picking one of their ready-made books, you can create your own if you're not happy with the layouts that they provide you. So let's start an empty double page spread. So we're here and I'm just gonna get rid of everything that's on the page and let's start by adding some text. So we're gonna add the same again, Florence. Now here, if you want to add all capitals text, you actually have to enter it as all capitals because you won't be able to change it later on. Align it to the left, make it bigger, maybe 70 or something. And I'm going to pick the same font. The only thing I can do to create some tracking here is to add the space between the letters, but you won't be able to pull the letters away from each other, unfortunately, but it still works. So I've got my main text. Now I'm going to add the story. I'm just going to copy paste and make it maybe 12, slightly longer. As you can see, Mixbook offers some alignment tools too, but they don't work very well. So you just have to work your way around and try to move it as best as you can and also make it Italy. There we go. So we've got the two texts. Now let's add a photo. I can't add the photo box anymore, but I can add the photo which comes with the box and I can change the box and that's it. And I'm going to move all of these up a little bit and that should be good. Now I'm going to add my accent colors. I'm going to come to stickers and here I've got shapes. Now, when I was talking about stickers in the previous example, I meant all of these little things that you can add to these projects that basically kind of kill the minimalist look. So let's add the rectangle again and change the color and I have to move it backwards and I can do that with the back option here. That looks about right. Now I'm going to work on the second page. So I need to add my photos. I'm going to start with the church and this is where it's going to be a little bit harder. So you can't actually measure this distance in the Mixbook editor. So you have to do it by eye or looking at it. And that kind of looks the same distance to me. Let's copy this. So you can't see an actual copy and paste option here, but you can use command C and command V and one more. There we go. And let's make this slightly taller, roughly. Now it's, it's much harder to work here with measurements, but here we are. I'm going to add the date. So copy paste 16 and again, just space it out a little bit. 14 should work. Now I'm going to duplicate my little accent color, move it back. And here we are. We managed to recreate almost identically the same design in the Mixbook editor as well without the very handy tools that come with Publisher. And you can see again, it's kind of a minimalist look. Now there's so much more that you can explore following those rules, but this was my little attempt in showing you how to work with minimalist designs and what things to watch out for when you want to create a truly minimalist looking layout for your next photo book project. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. As always, subscribe for more.